Well, once again, we greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who does all things well. And this week, this week, this week alone, we are able to bring you a historical lesson, a lesson that will focus on God's power and His presence. Again, December the 25th is a day that has been set aside to honor the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, and we look at the scripture from the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 9 and 6. He said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we're grateful. We're grateful for you looking out for our best interests. We're grateful that you have kept in, you have kept your covenant relationship with us by bringing forth a son, a child that will rule and super rule the world. The one who will lay down his life to bring about salvation and redemption in his name. We thank you for all that you have done, what you're doing right now, Father God, and even what you will do in the future. Bless this day. Bless this week. Bless as we look to you for all of our needs and, and all of our, Father God, wants. But yet, Father God, we allow Allow us to focus on the will, that your will will be done and that you will do what you will do according to our purpose for the God for kingdom building. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that all evil will turn to you and that everybody will accept Jesus as Lord and Savior for cause of his love and because of his kindness, because of your great mercy and because of your amazing grace, how sweet the sound that save a rest like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I'm see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. Again, this is part of our winter lesson. Lesson number four, December the 25th, 2022. Unit number one, God prepares the way. God prepares the way. And our topic for this outline for this Sunday, December 25th, open to be chosen open to be chosen. A devotional reading, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. A background scripture, Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 55. And our printed passage is the same. Luke chapter 1, verse 45 through 55. Our key verse reads, And Mary said, My soul doeth magnified the Lord, and my spirit have rejoiced in God my Savior. Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 47. Lesson aims. Number one, examine the significance of Mary being chosen by God to bear God's Son. Number two, consider Mary's response to being chosen. Number three, accept God's calling with an attitude of humility. Key terms for this lesson. Number one, glorifies means honor, esteem as glorious, magnifies, extol, or do it magnify. Number two, Israel means the name of Jewish people in their land. Number three, mercy means pity, compassion, that God toward sinners. In our biblical context, Mary's song, traditionally called Magnificent, calls to mind the song of Hannah according to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. Hannah who had been barren, sing praises to God at the dedication of her son, Samuel. Mary Magnificent celebrates what God has done. 
He has been mindful of the humble state of his servant, according to Luke chapter one, verse 48 a in choosing her as mother of the savior of the world. God bestows upon Mary an unspeakable honor. It is critical to note that Mary's response was not one of pride entitlement or self congratulation, but of humble reverence to God. Her focus and confidence were not in herself, her pedigree, her social status or her ritual. Instead of being lifted up in herself, her pedigree, her social status, or her virtue, Mary rejoiced even before the miracle had come to pass, that the mighty one had done great things for her according to Luke chapter 1 verse 49. In our introduction, the writer reminds us, a big fish in a small pun is an expression that refers to someone who appears to be more gifted or qualified than they truly are only because they are surrounded by a small or limited group of less tabit, uh, less talented competitors. These are so-called big fish don't always have a clear objective view of themselves, their strength or limitation. They may think more highly of themselves than they should because they are only comparing themselves to a small segment of people. For example, a young athlete, may be a star player of a small rural high school with few outstanding competitors, but they are unable to compete well against players across the state or the nation. Humility allows us to see ourselves as God actually sees us and reminds us that we have nothing that we did not receive according to 1 Corinthians 4 and 6, which reminds us, and these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sake, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Above all, it enables us to give God the glory and the credit for what he alone has enabled us to do. As we look at this lesson, people may be chosen to serve based on their power, wealth, authority, or political status. But how should we view those who are chosen to serve? According to Luke, Mary was chosen because she was humble, a humble servant, and she was chosen to be the mother of Jesus. It's because of her attitude, and attitude has all to do if we're going to increase in altitude, if we expect to be used mightily by God, then humble is the way. Again, if we expect to be used mightily by God, then humble is the way. In our first outline, my spirit rejoices. My spirit rejoices. Luke chapter one, verse 46 through 50 and verse 46 read. And Mary said, my soul doeth magnify the Lord. Verse 47. And my spirit have rejoiced in God, my savior. Verse 48. For he have regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. 
For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Verse 49, for he that is mighty have done to me great things, and holy is his name. Verse 50, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. So when we look at this lesson, Mary was a young woman who likely never imagined the possibility of any personal recognition or honor, yet she found favor with God. It is right for blessed people to give God praise. There are three reasons in verse 46 for Mary's excitement and extreme gratitude for God. First, she was pregnant which wasn't guaranteed among first century women. Infertility was more than a common occurrence as there was no fertility doctors or specialists during this time. This pregnancy was a blessing. But even more, Mary also knows she had not had sex with any man. The pregnancy is the result of being overcome by the Holy Spirit. This is reason for celebration and extreme gladness. Not only is she being chosen by God, but she also being touched by him as well. Secondly, Mary is grateful because she is pregnant with a son. In the day of antiquity, this guaranteed that Mary would have someone who would take care of her beyond her husband. Even women in Jesus' day would have hoped to have a son because a male child was not only a source of pride, but one who would grow and be able to take over the family inheritance. The birth of a son was not just a major social come up, but also a means to ensure that the family name would survive into another generation. Thirdly, the Jesus, the son of the living God, is who she is going to carry. Her gratitude is both understandable and appropriate. She sings a song of praise to God. Her soul magnifies the Lord, meaning that from the death of her heart, she expresses her gratitude for the greatness of God. The pregnant teen spirit has rejoiced in God, who she declares in her Savior, characterizing herself as being lowly in verse 48, refers to Mary social economic status rather than a debased character. Being poor and unmarried, i.e. not sponsored by a husband, she would have been considered an economic strain on the community. It is from this context of impoverished condition that God placed her instead in a state of blessing because of the child she is carrying in her womb. The humiliation associated with her destitution would disappear, not just for her, but according to the text, for all generations to come, they will call her blessed. That in and of itself is a major blessing. Mary most likely would not have been regarded very highly in her own generation for the reason we have discussed above but she would be exalted in subsequent generation. This should be a reason to celebrate 
as it reminds us that God can cause us to be remembered contribution to the world even beyond our own lifestyle. This should tell us that we ought to hold to the words of the hymnology who state, only what we do for Christ will last. In verse 49, Mary continues to honor God by acknowledging that he is mighty and he has done great things for her. Her praise of God is not continuant upon what he has done for her in the moment, but God's blessings are continuous. And I can hear Mary say, every time I turn around, the Lord keeps on blessing me. In verse 50, the song changes focus from blessing God as bestowed upon Mary to mercy he applies to those who fear him. This mercy is eternal and everlasting from generation to generation. Mary is a recipient of that mercy, which is why she mentions it. It is important to note Mary's emphasis on God's mercy because it demonstrates that God's mercy did not start at the cross in the substitutionary death of his son. God's mercy predates Christ's coming to earth in the flesh. In his coming was the manifestation of God's mercy. All throughout the Old Testament, we see the phrase, his mercy and do it for all generation. And that should be giving us key that his mercy will never run out. His mercy is a well that will never run dry. A second and final outline. His strength remains. His strength remains. Luke chapter 1 verse 51 through 55. Verse 51 reads, He have shewed strength with his arm. He have scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. Verse 52. He have put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of lowly of low degree. Verse 53. He have filled the hungry with good things and the rich he have sent empty away. Verse 54. He have helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Verse 55, as he spake of our fathers to Abraham and to his seeds forever. Starting in verse 51, however, Mary's songs again, song again to emphasize the strength of the Lord's arm and what he has already done through her son. This she declares while still pregnant with him. Mary, speaking of God's coming judgment in the past tense, may be an example of the prophetic perfect, in which the prophet is so sure of the future that he or she can speak of it has already happened. Or more than likely, Mary is speaking about God's future acts of redemption by calling to mind his past mighty acts. Mary, as one of Israel, knows the story of God's working within history. It is here that she might be thinking of Yahweh's deliverance of Israel out of Egypt or perhaps from Babylon. She could also be thinking of her ancestors like Sarah, Rachel, or Hannah, all of whom had a son in unlikely circumstances. It is in this that she knows that God is able to change many circumstances 
with his arm. According to the song, God will scatter the proud in the imagination of their heart. The deceptive plan of those who were not poor or were unaffected by the economic condition to subjugate the poor and struggling would not flourish. These were also individuals who did not fear God. Therefore, God will use her son to pull down the mighty from the throne, which is referring to the proud and the rich and their removal from political power and position. In contrast, God will pay carefully and loving attention to the lowly and those who are in great destitute and in despair. It will be a reversal of fortune it brought about by Jesus, wherein the hungry will be filled with good things, while the rich have been sent away empty handed. Mary's song of praise reflected a historical reality of the people of Judea. Verses 54 through 55 recall how he has helped his servant Israel and how his mercy has abided with Abraham in his seed forever. Again, I say it once again, God has kept his covenant with his people. He promised that he would never leave us, nor would he ever forsake us. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how bad things goes in this world, we're able to look to him for help. And he promised to be there. For the psalmist say he is our refuge, our present help and times of trouble. So as we close out this lesson, as we look to this Christmas day, as we look to Christ, the Savior to be born, we must pay much attention to the kinds of people God chooses for his greatest work. Mary was young and experienced, unqualified by human standards. Noticeably, the text give no description of Mary's appearance, personality, beauty, or intellect. What did she have? It is humility that made Mary so special and right for the assignment. Such humility will occur in our lives without effort. We must actively, deliberately, steadfastly work in the work with the Holy Spirit to put on the attributes that God favor. Words like compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience toward others. As we do, humility will grow in us and we will become the kind of men and women that God chooses and uses for eternal thing. It takes spiritual maturity to praise God for things that don't seem like blessing. As you look back over the years, pause to thank God for unlikely blessing, the closed door that led to new pathways. The pain that led to a life-saving diagnosis. The pink slip that led to promotion. The rejection that led to peace of mind. The bad news that led to good news. And other blessing that came in the way of disguises. My brothers and sisters, praising God is more than a task which is reserved for certain people in the church, i.e. the choir, the praise team, or even the pastor. Praise is the responsibility of everyone who has been touched and blessed by God. Whether public or private, our praise should be instant, personal, and heartfelt.
The very thought of God's goodness should move you to rejoice and offer grateful praise for what God has done for you and others. If God has blessed you and he has, you have a song to sing. Do not allow anyone to hinder or discourage you from praising the true and living God in this season. Again, we have been in COVID protocol for almost three years. God has protected us. God has provided us even in a economy that has been broken and even in despair. But yet God blesses us. He provides our every need according to his riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus in this season. We have much to be thankful for. But again, the reason for this season is Jesus. Jesus is the reason for this season. My brothers and sisters, Mary was chosen because of her humility. And I just say unto you, humble is the way. A lot of people say they humble, but it doesn't show up in their attitude or even their action. May this lesson bless you. May you share it with somebody who's struggling. Let them know that Christ is the answer to every test, every situation that they will face in this lifetime. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, once again, we're grateful. We're grateful for the opportunity to praise you from whom all blessings flow. We praise you for a son Jesus Christ, the one who will come in many forms. He will be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He will be Emmanuel, which means God is with us. He will be called the bread of life, the water of life, the good shepherd, the true vine, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth and the life. He will be able to do things that we cannot do for ourselves. Salvation and redemption will be upon his life, that he will sacrifice his life so we might be free. So today, in an attitude of gratitude, we simply say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and loving us in spite of all our wrongdoing. Thank you for turning us around. Thank you for shining your light from heaven and giving us another chance. Father God, we thank you on today. We glorify you. We worship you for who you are. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and we do say amen, amen, and amen again. My brothers and sisters, again, this is Pastor James Daniels, pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church located in Volula, Alabama. Again, I wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I say unto you today, Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't let go, for God will lead and guide you if you have the childlike faith to, clean, to gleam to him and hold to him as he order our steps through his holy and divine word. May God bless you. May he keep you. May you continue to share and like this channel that you may get encouragement every week. I'm thankful for the platform. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit that inspires me and keeps me focused on the assignment, which is to prepare the way for Jesus, that Jesus may enter into our lives. But most of all, we must have a heart that is ready to receive the one who will come to deliver us. So may God bless you. May he keep you. May you pray for me as I pray for you. Until we meet again, I say unto you, be good.